जल ही जीवन है वी ऑल हर्ड इट राइट बट ओनली वेन इट्स प्योर एंड क्लीन हेलो एंड वेलकम टू येट अनदर इंस्पिरेशनल एपिसोड ऑफ बी ऑन शो एंड टूडे आई एम ऑनर्ड एंड वेरी डिलाइटेड टू हैव अ ग्लोबली रिनाउंड लीडर अ विजनिटी साइंटिस्ट who has recently won prestigious any award for his ground breaking contribution in providing affordable drinking water to millions and harnessing uh, the advanced application of nanotechnology currently professor pradeep is working as a renowned institute professor and professor of chemistry at the prestigious indian institute of technology madras he also hold honorable position of deepak parikh chair professor and the visionary founder of international center for clean water professor pradeep done his bsc and msc from calicut university followed by phd from iisc bangalore and postdoc from university of california and purdue university he joined iit madras as visiting faculty in 1993 he is the second person on the campus to hold the position of institute professor and in 2016 he became the first institute chair professor at iit madras research interests span across diverse domains such as molecular and nanoscale material clean water surface and instrumentation and business incubation he has made ground breaking contribution to the field of nuclear fusion cluster assembled material clathrate hydrates and water purification further his group published more than 500 publication in addition to several books and patents his research has transformed into several technologies including the first nano material based pesticide removal from water which is named amrit he is also associated with incubation of several startups like inodi water technology biogel technology and many more professor pradeep's remarkable contribution to the field of nanotechnology and material chemistry have garnered him a multitude of prestigious awards and honors both in india and on the global stage he recently honored with the prestigious any award for his ground breaking uh, research on water technologies among his other numerous accolades is the highly esteemed shanti swarup bhatnagar prize an honor of paramount significance in the indian scientific community on the other hand his excellence and dedication led to his induction as a recipient of padma shri uh, which is one of the india's highest civilian uh, honors these remarkable achievements underscore professor pradeep's profound influence on scientific advancement and his enduring com- commitment to pushing the boundaries of knowledge it's impossible for me to summarize uh, the contribution in this short span of time so without a further ado i extend my sincere and heartfelt welcome to you sir namaste and thank you for blessing beyond show and providing us the opportunity to uh, feature your legacy uh, to my audience first of all i just want to extend my heartiest congratulations to you and to your team on winning the prestigious uh, any award thank you so much sir thank you thank you indeed So, sir, my first question to you is: Can you just uh, summarize us about your research interest and the technologies that your you and your group has developed over these years? First of all, I just want to. Well, my research. I'm a chemist. Um, I mm-hmm. studied chemistry for many, many years. This is my thirtieth year as a professor. Oh. I joined when I was just uh, going to be thirty at IIT Madras, uh, and then uh, several years. So now thirty years. I mean, thirty mm-hmm. years have passed by. so this is uh, what it is today mm-hmm. so in this period i was looking at fundamental uh, aspects of molecules materials mm-hmm. chemical bonds but this continues this activity mm-hmm. goes on and we keep publishing many as mm-hmm. many books but a portion of this science we also use uh, for societies um, purposes mm-hmm. largely in the context of clean water Mm-hmm. there are other areas but then there are largely in the mm-hmm. context of water this is what i uh, well i am recognized for but mm-hmm. i do many other things as yes. well so sure. i just want to place that before mm-hmm. you now in water uh, if you start asking water itself is a, such a massive subject mm-hmm. water is a capital w i mean dams river mm-hmm. big 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 water uh, water also has a small thing drinking water mm-hmm. this is what i work on Of course, water has waste water, 
uh, sewage, uh, mm -hmm. storm water, uh, huge, very many aspects of water. So I work on two things rather, mm -hmm. drinking water and water vapor. Yes. Water vapor, water in the air. Mm -hmm. Largely work on this. This itself is very big. Very big. Mm -hmm. In fact, drinking water has made civilizations. Yes. Water has made everything. Water has made all the richness uh, of this world. Water is moving our society. So if you start asking, what did you do in that? That itself is, I would say, very tiny. So I am, I'm, I'm humbled by what I have. Mm -hmm. I have done very little. Uh, well, so much more to do. So in that, what is that little that you did? I started, when I was looking at water around 2002, mm -hmm. I saw that uh, Indian water, drinking water, mm -hmm. could be contaminated with pesticides. Yes, sir. And when we, I heard about this, I was asking this question, what can you do with our materials mm -hmm. to solve that problem? Mm -hmm. That made uh, my research, and we found that Pesticides can be broken down by nanoparticles. Mm -hmm. This was my very first patent. Mm -hmm. It got, fortunately, it got issued in 2005. Mm -hmm. It became a product in the market. Mm -hmm. Since then, I asked this question, well, water is not uh, having only pesticides. Mm -hmm. It has many other things. So Why not this, look yes. at all of those issues gradually I thought that this water problem will be solved in a few years mm -hmm. because I thought that this whole thing can be addressed in the laboratory so fast. Mm -hmm. but it so happened that this is, uh, you know, this is as we started getting into it, we realized the magnitude of the problem mm -hmm. and the kind of investment required in uh, research efforts required to solve that. Uh, and it became, it took a very long time, about 12 years of our research and subsequent uh, translational efforts mm -hmm. made it possible to solve the um, arsenic contamination problem technologically. The problem is not solved yet. Mm -hmm. uh, people are still having arsenic containing water, but technologically it can be addressed affordably and sustainably. Mm -hmm. And this is something that we could do. So sir, now, this, this technology is named Amrit. Yes, this is technology is named Amrit. Mm -hmm. Now, this is uh, now addressing also uranium uh, contamination and mm -hmm. several other things in different parts of the country. Mm -hmm. uh, I have been fortunate to create or address a problem of that kind. Mm -hmm. with our research, taking it through multiple steps of field implementation, trials, mm -hmm. with governmental support, it was yes. possible to be expanded. Hmm. And it's now expanding beyond the country's borders. This is what uh, we could do. So, sir, in, uh, is it possible to uh, remove all this impurity through uh, one type of technology? Or we need very specialized for every molecule type. For example, for arsenic, we need a specialized uh, nanoparticle. For uh, some other pollutant, we need a specific nanoparticle. Fortunately, yes, you are right that in, in detail, if you want to start looking, Mm -hmm. Looking at all the contaminants in water, you may require different materials. Mm -hmm. But fortunately, in a given region, if you are a, an arsenic affected region, mm -hmm. the number of contaminants present in that is just a few. You don't have a whole gamut of contaminants mm -hmm. there. So therefore, it is possible to be addressed with one material or maybe one more material. So is it possible to mix the materials to right. achieve whatever Absolutely. Absolutely. the target? So most of the places, if you stay arsenic contaminated areas, arsenic is present, iron is present, a little bit of manganese is mm -hmm. present. That's all our, fortunately, that is what it is. Some mm -hmm. regions arsenic and fluoride may exist a little bit. Some regions arsenic and uranium may exist like that. It is not that everything in, you know, every contaminant is present in that water. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Yes, sir. So, sir, uh, like in our homes, we use uh, the type of uh, purifier. Yes. Is it somehow the uh, based on your technologies? Some of them do. Uh, some, most of them. Well, you know, it different depending on the kind of region mm -hmm. that you you have. But uh, the way that we have thought about this problem, mm -hmm. you know, home units are something of a distinct category. Mm -hmm. uh, we thought about solving the community's larger issues. Yes. 
so in the water supply houses or right. more to most of the water distribution lines mm -hmm. in these affected areas they use our uh, technology mm -hmm. uh, now there are many others also right this mm -hmm. is this i should be sensitive to that there are many other technologies mm -hmm. all of them are uh, very good um, we have been fortunate uh, you know we addressed this question um, long long ago i was asking mm -hmm. do we have an affordable Hmm. sustainable solution yes. for clean water. Uh, this was significant or important for me. Mm -hmm. So what is the point in doing this solution if it is uh, cannot reach people? So today, okay. arsenic-free water is at a cost of 2.1 paisa per liter. Okay. Hmm. So this, without that, I don't think these technologies uh, make any sense, mm -hmm. especially in India. So, sir, uh, then uh, only the impurities will be removed and the essential minerals are there, they absolutely, remain. Absolutely. Absolutely. They are retained. Yes, they mm -hmm. are retained. Of course, if uh, what is the point in removing uh, calcium oh, yes. and, uh, you know, many others we require, zinc mm -hmm. and all that, we require molybdenum, we require all of them. And I'm not an advocate of removing everything mm -hmm. uh, uh, and supplying pure H2O. Yes, that's, that's not a, a good thing. Yes, sir. So, sir, uh, what all advanced technologies uh, you are currently working on or we can see in near future? Well, uh, in the lab, uh, we work on harvesting air, harvesting humidity mm -hmm. from air. Okay. Achha, uh, in one initiative, I uh, learned about right. Vayujal. Correct. Yes. What is that? That is mm -hmm. one uh, thing that we work on. Now, today, this Vayu gel technology requires electricity mm -hmm. uh, to condense humidity, mm -hmm. uh, although efficiently, but it requires electricity. It can be solar, etc., but it requires electricity. Okay. But is it possible to do this without electricity? Mm -hmm. So with sunlight, well, only thing that is used is sunlight and circulation, mm -hmm. natural mm -hmm. circulation. Then it is possible that on top of your roof, you have a box which will supply you drinking water mm -hmm. without mm -hmm. investing anything. So it's it's enough for a household. Yes, is it yes. possible? So, right. It is possible. It is mm -hmm. possible. But today, these materials do cost money. Mm -hmm. uh, we need to, so therefore, material, I mean, capital cost mm -hmm. is going to be uh, a little bit higher than what mm -hmm. a normal household can afford. So is it possible, let's say, 2,000 rupees, 3,000 rupees, mm -hmm. you have a box which will supply you water mm -hmm. without any other investment. Mm -hmm. now, and that is, is again very clean water. It's very clean water. So this is one kind of thing that we work. Mm -hmm. We also um, work in the context of sensors. Um, is it possible, this arsenic I told you, uh, mm -hmm. which is very important to remove. But do you know, do you have a methodology to measure that arsenic concentration at very, very low concentration mm -hmm. in the field affordably? Mm -hmm. We do not have. So, we so have uh, ways of seeing it, but it is not something that mm -hmm. is very low concentrations. Is it possible to get that on my mobile phone? Yes. Uh, and if that is per, per analysis, it mm -hmm. uh, costs, let us say, one rupee. Then it is very interesting. Mm -hmm. This requires advanced materials and we work on them. So, sir, currently you are also working on this a mobile yes. app. Can we accept, expect a mobile app? We have mobile apps for okay. many contaminants already hmm. in the lab. But we don't have it for arsenic and we would like to solve that problem also. So, you know, you asked me what are the new things going on. So, hmm. this is very important in to me. It is such a thing is needed. No, it is because also... It, yeah. Because it, it will have a very wide application. Every household can use. Because... Absolutely. In Absolutely. current scenario, I am in Delhi and we usually uh, have certain times when uh, the water supply is providing very dirty water or uh, water with uh, some smell, etc. So right. then it will be possible for us to uh, measure this and, you know, uh, know sure. About whether... Sure, sure. So imagine, you know, you have a meter which is mm. as small as this. Yes. And it is possible to be put in water. Mm. And not only that, it is put in water, this data comes on this. Hmm. And so when it is some coming on this, this goes to the cloud. Hmm. And not only that, it goes for today, it's on the cloud. Hmm. Tomorrow, it's also on the cloud. For one year, it is on the cloud. And therefore, you know what you consume. And hmm. therefore, it is with analytics, it is possible to predict hmm. as to what has happened to you hmm. or what could happen to you. 
Yes. I am waiting for this. To so be this is what is, <laughs> yes. So this is what is happening uh, mm -hmm. in in the laboratories. And mm -hmm. uh, we, you know, imagine I said this and this, right? Uh, together. Mm -hmm. If let's say this can be combined. Mm -hmm. Then it's going to be only one thing mm -hmm. which will I will shoot uh, uh, water, let us say a glass of water, mm -hmm. uh, and I know the water quality. Yes. So that will be a great thing. Mm -hmm. And now you are not only measuring this particular thing as you are walking, you are looking at the rivers, you are mm -hmm. looking, you know, the well. You are looking at all that, yes. and you are doing actually community service. Mm -hmm. So imagine our school children do this. Hmm. And imagine what will happen to our country. So all these are interesting proposals. Interesting so, proposal also, sir. They have vast applications. Absolutely, absolutely. And very necessary applications. Yeah, and they participate in the process, right? Hmm. Like children participate in the community yes. building process. Hmm. So they uh, they become water warriors. Hmm. Uh, they become citizens uh, who are aware of uh, water. Hmm. So water awareness. Yes. Is something closely connected to the availability of appropriate sensors. Mm. Sure, sir. So, sir, uh, basically what I've seen when I have learned about your research and all in detail, research from a lab is transforming the lives of millions and it's perfect example how research from a lab should uh, reach the masses. So, what is the main motivation or inspiration that drives this vision of yours? Madam, I, I'm from a village. Hmm. I walked four kilometers through paddy fields hmm. to my school. Oh. So I played with water. Hmm. And I enjoy water. Hmm. And uh, fields feed our country. Hmm. And if you are not aware of your roots, hmm. then if you are a detached individual mm. uh, research to me is closely connected to the, your ground reality of the country it's not that i do 100 percent only that research mm -hmm. you have as i told you i do many other things mm -hmm. but it to me it's essential that we yes. give something to our our country mm -hmm. uh, our country our world you know where we live in this is central mm -hmm. uh, i mean i you see, my laboratory is very rich. Hmm. It's rich with all the resources, infrastructure. Although I'm from a poor village and all that, that's true. Hmm. But I have built all that. Hmm. But when I say I have built all that, this is not just I have built. Hmm. I mean, this country has given that. Hmm. Country has given that. Hmm. And I have done this with, with students. And students are our, our students. Hmm. Our, our uh, wealth, right? Hmm. It is with them we have built this. And obviously, it has to go back. It, hmm. it must go back. So this is what is uh, the passion. This is, mm -hmm. this is uh, but then you can't do everything, right? I'm interested mm -hmm. in many, many things. I'm interested in many things. In fact, mm -hmm. there is very little that I am not interested in. But I can't do all that. So but I sir, can't... through your vision, you can inspire others to, you know, take a forward these issues Absolutely. and all problems. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. When they see your story or the, the type of work that you are uh, doing and contributing to the society, they will get inspired. Yes, because water is the only necessity and it is very necessary to have clean water and it is the basic need every human being or be it an animal or uh, others any living being can uh, expect to be on this earth so sir how as you have uh, told that you are from a village how you see your upbringing family and mentor support shaped you uh, as a global leader in your domain I don't know that I'm a global leader or not, but... Sir, I, you I also, are, sir, you are. All I can you tell are you, the pride of India, you are. All I can tell you is, uh, you see, I'm... I, my parents mm -hmm. were school teachers. Mm -hmm. uh, and my father uh, said that the most important wealth you mm -hmm. can have is the power of letters. Mm -hmm. So you worship letters. Mm -hmm. Worship knowledge. So fortunately, uh, younger days, uh, I saw books mm -hmm. around me. Uh, my father was a writer. Mm -hmm. I saw writers around me. Mm -hmm. I saw poets. Uh, I saw poetry. Mm -hmm. I heard poetry. Uh, people used to recite poetry. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can see the joy or you know, in their mm -hmm. face. 
So I saw this and I wanted to be a writer. Hmm. Naturally, I wanted to be a writer. Because so that is reflected in the number of publications that you have. So the best of writers used to come hmm. home. Hmm. Now, in the course of time, I realized that, well, writing is very important, but how do you change the society? Hmm. The most important thing to change society is technology, science. Hmm. Science translates or transforms society. Mm -hmm. Well, so when I asked my father, I, I want to be a writer in my language, Malayalam. So you want to you name your father? Father uh, and mother both? My, my father's name is the Talapil Narayanan Nair. Mm -hmm. So he did not like this Nair, uh, which is a caste name. Achha. So therefore, he called himself Thalapil. N mm -hmm. Thalapil. So mm -hmm. Thalapil is a pen name. Okay. And he gave me that as my mm. my last name. Mm. So Talapil became this last name, this mm. is a pen name of my father. Mm. Mother is Kunji Lakshmi. So both of them were uh, teachers, as I told mm. you. Now, writers around. Mm. And I asked him, my father, well, I want to study. What do you want to study? I want to study Malayalam literature. Mm. Literature. He said, well, I would like you to study something that can fetch you bread. Mm -hmm. Get something to live. Mm -hmm. I said, well, Malayalam can get me li a living. Mm -hmm. said, no, it is difficult to have a living with this. Mm -hmm. You study science. Mm -hmm. I asked this question internally, what is that science which is closer to poetry? Mm -hmm. Because that is what I liked. And then I came to chemistry because chemistry was smells, chemistry was colors, mm -hmm. chemistry was romantic, chemistry mm -hmm. was all that was happening around me. Yes, yes, so yes. I chose uh, to mm -hmm. do chemistry. Mm -hmm. When I went on doing chemistry, I realized that I know no chemistry. You see, after a degree in master's mm -hmm. degree, I realized that I have no understanding of chemistry. Mm -hmm. So that's how I went to do a PhD so that I would learn a little more. Mm -hmm. And after, when, while doing PhD, I saw lots of exciting, you know, fantastic people. Mm -hmm. I saw that they were changing the world. Mm -hmm. So it was natural that I got in love with this mm -hmm. uh, subject mm -hmm. during uh, PhD. During PhD, and and uh, then I decided that I will be a well. Even before I uh, I decided that I will become a professor. Mm -hmm. That's what my life is going to be. And fortunately, during my PhD itself, my an you know, opportunity came to be mm -hmm. uh, a teacher in a university. But my professor said, no, 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 don't do that. You know, I, you do, should do something better, something bigger. Who is your, who is your supervisor? Uh, my, one of my supervisors is uh, Professor C. N. R. Rao, who is uh, oh, Aradhra. He's well renowned, yes. Hmm. So he told me, well, you know, you should do something better, bigger. Hmm. So, well, that, then I went on further and then, then I became a professor here. That's how it happened. Hmm. So, so basically, so what yeah. inspires you to come back to India? Oh, okay. Well, India, my blood is very thick, mm -hmm. very, very thick. And I used to keep, uh, people keep saying that my blood is so thick that I, I enjoy only here, you know. Mm -hmm. it, it is hard to do science here. And mm -hmm. it was impossible to do anything meaningful in, in those days. Mm -hmm. No courses, no infrastructure, uh, no spectrometers and all. Mm -hmm. uh, no laboratory. There was no culture of independent laboratory. There was no mm -hmm. freedom available, etc. But today, if you look around, everything is there. Everything is there, yes. I have my big labs. I have even a separate building and all that. Mm -hmm. I, have, I have lots of things. Mm -hmm. All of these uh, is largely because, you know, this institution allowed me, this institution mm -hmm. transformed me, the, the governments, uh, the country uh, enabled that. You know, if you, if you think that you don't have anything, you will never have. Mm -hmm. You simply assume that you have everything. You mm -hmm. go uh, assuming that you have everything, mm -hmm. then the world opens up for you. Mm -hmm. uh, this has been my story. Great decision, uh, sir. Great decision because uh, yeah. India need people to, yeah. you know, continue the glory and uh, inspire others to come back. I always ask my guests when India will become the superpower in science and technology that we invite the uh, foreigners here for postdoc and when India became the option for others to do postdoc and research. So, sure. Sure. so, so 12, you know, 30 years ago, hmm. <clears throat> 
uh, my first machine, my first spectrometers, I built with 15,000 rupees. Okay. I had only that much. Hmm. But I made them uh, with smaller, small components. Hmm. I did my welding, I did my bracing, I did my electronics, I did all, all that myself. Awesome. And that's how I built things. Uh -huh. and today, uh, my laboratory has probably closed about uh, 100 crores of infrastructure. Hmm. So today we can buy. Hmm. Uh, but it's all, everything became possible hmm. by you doing it yourself. Hmm. Uh, and I would advise everyone uh, to do it. Assume that you have everything get started so sir you are following this making india initiative from your early days it has to yes. be it has to be we are what we make hmm. uh, very you know, inspiring sir very inspiring hmm. so uh, sir how you got interested in nanotechnology because at that time nanotechnology itself is a you know the field that not uh, many are working on yes so what yeah inspired you to take up nanotechnology and in your career? I was uh, fascinated by new properties hmm. and the material becoming very new hmm. when the size gets reduced. Hmm. That's what nanotechnology is. Hmm. Hmm. New properties come in the same old thing when simply hmm. by changing the size, their sizes. Hmm. So fascination for new properties mm. uh, took me to this. And that is something that I don't know about. Mm. How do I know? And that inquisitiveness took me. Mm. Now, this is also something that I could do, right? Mm. It, is, uh, it is, although laboratories are poor, infrastructure mm. is not there, etc. But I knew that this could be done mm. in fact with limited infrastructure, mm. limited resources. So therefore I got into to that. Mm. Uh, so around me, there were people who were sort of of similar kind, exploring new opportunities mm -hmm. without infrastructure. Mm. My own advisor is one such uh, person mm. who ventured into newer and newer things and never bothered about whether infrastructure is available or not created infrastructure. Yes. Uh, so you need to have ambience of uh, people who also showed that it is possible uh, to do. Mm. Yes, sir. Definitely. So, sir, uh, we know that uh, Amrit has reached in India. Internationally yes. also, people are using it? Internationally, community installations are happening mm -hmm. in two countries. Now in uh, uh, in Cambodia and in Chile, mm -hmm. uh, discussions are going on in implementing these in uh, Vietnam. Mm -hmm. We have tested these in uh, Kenya, mm -hmm. uh, South Africa, Australia, mm -hmm. Argentina, mm -hmm. places like that, but they have not been implemented. Okay. The technology works. Mm -hmm. Now, this is where this Make in India and such other initiatives yes. uh, should help. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, what happens oftentimes is that we need to create these uh, linkages with the local uh, impl implementers, partners, mm -hmm. and to make ensure that these technologies reach mm -hmm. uh, such places. We do not have academic institutions like ours, do not have mm -hmm. such mechanisms. Mm -hmm. And so now that we are doing very well in, in business mm -hmm. promotion and research parks mm -hmm. and all that within the country, we should also explore such possibilities abroad. Mm -hmm. And that's what is going on and it is taking yes. time. Uh, naturally, it takes time. Mm -hmm. But because we should, uh, with governments, we should initiate it faster. Yes. yes. It can be a blessing for smaller countries like Kenya and all. And right, right. Of course, of course it is. Uh, you know, this, these problems that you, we say, these are cynic and all, mm. there's a serious problem here, but Cambodia, it is, it is severe. Mm. So there are a large number of such mm. countries where these technologies are needed. Maybe it is even, I would go even a step further, that mm. tested technologies, not only this, many other technologies, mm. India should be in a position to alleviate the pain of others. Mm. 
Uh, we should build these just as we did for COVID. Yes. We should solve such things mm. and give these technologies, implement them with our effort. Mm. And later on in the course of time, yes. local local companies and all mm. these will come up in those places. Yes. And they will come up later and that can, uh, you know, spread this type of initiative. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's the only way to reach yes. sustainable development goals. When you say clean water for all, mm -hmm. it is, yes, clean water for all is possible not only by their own local initiative, mm -hmm. but global initiatives. Yes. So, sir, you have received many awards and recognition. Uh, how do you feel about these awards and what they really mean to you? <laughs> Madam, awards uh, come because you did mm -hmm. something. Yes. I worry about or I'm passionate about doing something mm. keep doing recognitions will come mm. and, and if you say that you did not get these uh, recognitions therefore you stop doing mm. that's the end of everything so to me it is only work mm. and in the course of work you get an award it is it's great it's a good feeling um, mm. to, to to hear about it uh, to get it at the right time mm. uh, but you never work for awards yes Awards do do not should not mm. uh, occupy a, an important position in your head. Awards are there, yes, important. But they also bring more responsibility and expectation. Of course, of course. Uh, awards get you more uh, opportunities, mm. right? Awards also get give you more responsibilities, all right. But the mm. awards, to me you have to live up to those awards. Mm. Otherwise, you are bringing down those awards. Yes. Uh, and you need to give space for others mm. uh, to stand on your shoulders mm. so that they can accomplish far more. Mm. Awards should make you humble. Yes. Um, you know, because you got several awards, mm. uh, you now as a result of which a student is afraid of talking to you, <laughs> uh, then you have destroyed the award's uh, yes. essential purpose. Yes. Yeah. Very well, well, well said, sir. Sir, uh, you are the founder of International Center for Clean Water, which is a unique initiative from IIT Madras. So what inspired uh, to start this center and what are the main objectives on which this uh, center is dedicated? For a long time, uh, mm -hmm. I have been working on water as uh, we just now heard. Mm -hmm. uh, but there are many, many others who are working on water. Mm -hmm. the there are 930 or so institutions in the country giving PhDs. Okay, yes. There are hun more than 100 institutions working on water in a big way. Mm -hmm. How many have been in a position to translate these research findings to technology? Mm -hmm. Very few, very few, very, very few. Mm -hmm. So I thought it is important that we create an opportunity to others mm -hmm. so that innovations in water can get translated to products. Mm -hmm. It's the only way to accomplish sustainable development goals. Mm -hmm. It is not just that one arsenic will address water. Mm -hmm. There yes. are hundreds of things that are required and mm -hmm. they are all opportunities. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is one, one reason. Yes. That is you create, create, give a platform for people mm -hmm. to innovate in the area of water. Mm -hmm. Second thing is that we have our learnings. Hmm. These learnings are not something that you can always write down in a pen and paper mm -hmm. and take a course. Taking that course will get you a, a, a become mm -hmm. an innovator. It is not possible. Mm -hmm. You have a place mm -hmm. where people can experience this yes. uh, and work with individuals and build. So we say in International Center for Clean Water, come with an idea mm -hmm. and build a company. Okay. Anything that is needed for that mm -hmm. in the area, we will help you with. Okay. So that is the second thing. Mm -hmm. the third thing is that innovations across, innovations are not happening mm -hmm. only in Professor Pradeep's group, right? Innovations are happening everywhere. Well, well, I think yes. is a very big place. Mm -hmm. So lots of things are happening. And everything is synergizing, you know? It is not just that one water technology is happening, mm -hmm. healthcare is happening, or something else is happening. So all of them together create that ecosystem. Mm -hmm. This ecosystem is what is enabling new innovations. Yes, sir. So people have to experience these innovations mm -hmm. and this ecosystem will be even more strengthened with, with international collaborations. Mm -hmm. See, I work with about uh, yes. 28 or so countries across the world uh, in, in different ways in um, water or other areas. So 
is it not possible to create a platform for everyone to yeah. come mm. and uh, share their experiences mm. so this is the other reason mm. so i would say international center for clean water is a place where anyone can come and innovate in the area of water mm. very great uh, vision sir because uh, what is problem with science i uh, i usually felt in india that we have we only hide our research that we will not going to share it with some other person until and unless we published but nobody cares of a broader image a broader vision for to you know just collaborate and generate a newer product and newer technologies so yes this is the much needed and i think uh, and many other domains also they will also uh, collaborate in this way and provide the ecosystem for the young innovators to you know just thrive and uh, come up with a product so my thought is that you know language is a legacy of humanity mm -hmm. there is nothing called your language and my language yes. the language is between us mm -hmm. same is the case with uh, my name mm -hmm. my name is you know is a name because you call me with that mm -hmm. if there are no people to call me there is no name mm -hmm. same is the case with science yes. science is of humanity mm -hmm. and this has to be shared mm -hmm. Of course, you are an honor. You are an author. You mm. have patents. You have all that thing, but I, I do respect that. But mm. the reality is that this has been built with this country, mm. with the world, with all that knowledge that we have created over generations, over centuries, mm. over humanity, mm. the entire civilization. Mm. And so it belongs to uh, the humanity. Yes. So, sir, uh, all through these years, what? are the challenges that you have faced or you can say uh, these are the major hurdles and uh, that uh, situations can be you know changed or if they were smoothly gone uh, the innovation could be up on another level what are the struggle and challenges that came across your journey there are very many uh, challenges mm -hmm. uh, the most important thing is that science is in science you get returns very slowly mm -hmm. and society by and large does not understand that mm -hmm. i never owned a house for very many years mm -hmm. for um, for over 25 years in iit madras we didn't have a house mm -hmm. of, of something that we own right we, of course mm -hmm. we lived in the iit madras quarters mm -hmm. i never invested uh, my time into those mm -hmm. because building science was sort of consuming all the energy mm. science gives you returns slowly mm. and this is one thing mm. uh, what it means is that scientists are not adequately uh, valued mm. uh, in our society mm. uh, today things are different they get better salaries and all that yes. but uh, reality is that they produce more scientists mm. they don't have opportunities mm. so i see that while i people see that all well, professor pradeep is doing great science etc mm -hmm. with this kind of a euphoria or feeling mm -hmm. they all jump into water let us say and or in materials they become phd's post docs and all that they don't have adequate opportunities mm -hmm. so we do not build enough opportunities so this is one uh, larger problem mm -hmm. and for me in my younger years uh this meant that i did not get enough funding mm. i did not get opportunities etc so this continues so mm. this is the larger struggle but mm. i would say that you keep keep asking mm. you keep asking you keep going to people uh, you keep crying right ultimately people will see that mm. people will see that uh, you get uh, rewarded recognized etc mm. so the story of a scientist is a continuous pain yes. now this i would say is true of a, an artist mm -hmm. i have great artists as friends mm -hmm. uh, this is true of great musicians this is true of, of great writers all of these creative mm -hmm. profession of course is painful mm -hmm. uh, that has been a i would say that i knew it therefore i was happy to take that pain <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, but people should not feel that this is something that uh, the mm -hmm. world all these riches will come to you on a platter mm -hmm. nothing yes you, you have to fight for it mm. now the society appreciates 
value wealth mm. much far more than knowledge mm. that is the problem of today's world sir so this is uh, this is a problem and you have to be prepared for it mm. so there was a time when i was uh, a student doing phd uh, there was a friend of mine who was doing his uh, his um, md mm. and i go uh, i mean we both studied together he decided to do medicine i went to chemistry mm. that's about it so uh, when we go somewhere he gets a seat and i don't get a seat because he is a doctor is a doctor oh now those days have changed today mm -hmm. we both go i get a seat first mm. what i'm trying to say is that this is a society's mindset mm. uh, you have to be prepared for that this is mm. not this is not going to change mm. you may be a great uh, scientist or something the auto fellow will not recognize you mm. right he not you will still have an argument with an auto rickshaw driver 250 rupees or 225 rupees or 200 <laughs> rupees you still have an argument mm. eh? Uh, whereas Rajini Kant is recognized, yes, yes. sure, yes, should be. Ma because so marketing. Saying, <laughs> marketing. This is a different world. Yes. Uh, so, but then you should be prepared uh, mm. to face that world. Uh, mm. You are just an ordinary individual. You are a human being. You are concerned about science. Mm. You don't expect too many things, and therefore, I have not had this unhappiness. Mm. Took that unhappiness as quite natural mm -hmm. and moved on. But if you were to list out those unha unhappy events, there are too many. Mm. I took them as, by and large, opportunities. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't have infrastructure. So what do you do? You yeah. do science without that infrastructural limitation. Mm. You overcome the limitations with your thinking. Mm. With your limited resources, you overcome the limitations. Mm -hmm. So you may want a great equipment mm. for your science, but you have only you don't have that. Mm. So how do you do the very same thing with limited infrastructure? Mm. You may require a high-fi chemical or an expensive chemical to do mm. your science. How do I do this without that? Mm. How do I do it? Maybe by making it. Mm. So I took this as opportunities and 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 built on. And today, if you come to the laboratory, you will see that it is that is how the lab is built. Yes, sir. I I have just uh, scrolled your website. It is very well uh, maintained and very well presented. All that, uh, when I am uh, researching about you, I don't need to go anywhere else. The, everything is there on the website. Mm, so, thank you. I will also make my one for my, myself also when I <laughs> reach that position. <laughs> Hopefully, very, I do. Very nice. I, by the way, my uh, websites are all maintained by my students. Mm. Very well designed, sir. Very well designed. So uh, when there is a new paper, they mm. put it up. And there is a recognition, they put it mm. up, etc. I do monitor it, mm. uh, but it is it's done by uh, students. To no, me... It's very, you know, very well. Uh, it's updated also. Yeah, and it is it's very well made. So it is important that mm -hmm. students uh, not only do just the science, mm -hmm. they also uh, be in the laboratory. We have mm -hmm. a small library where you have you can read novels mm -hmm. and all that. You know, you you have a library. Mm -hmm. you, you in addition to many things that we have, we have a mini home, right? Mm -hmm. so this is what we do. People work here uh, what 14, 15 hours a day. Mm -hmm. So we create an ambience for that, and over a period of time, it is it transforms you. So, sir, how many uh, people are there in your group? Oh, very many. <laughs> My group is okay. big. It's about forty-five people now. Okay, very uh, big group. Very big. Hmm. very big. Very big. Probably the one of the largest groups in the country. Hmm. So, for example, you have talked about Vayujal. Can this technology be used for uh, the drought drought prone areas for irrigation and somehow supporting irrigation so that is it possible? At this stage, with the what we call as active harvesting, mm -hmm. with our requirement, mm -hmm. it is good only for drinking water. Irrigation requires far more water. Mm -hmm. uh, so when that is solved by things called passive harvesting where no power is required against active harvesting mm -hmm. it will be possible 
And so this type so, of technology as because uh, it is utilizing humidity to make water, maybe. Right. So right. it will affect the uh, environment somehow? No. The amount of uh, hu humidity present in the water is mm -hmm. so, so large. Mm -hmm. So large that even if, let us say, per person, mm -hmm. we have billions of liters of water available. Mm -hmm. To, for harvesting. Mm -hmm. So we don't change the total humidity in any way because after all, when you reduce something, this evaporates. You see, this is a continuous cycle that mm -hmm. happens. But if you locally, let us say in this region, in this room, mm -hmm. if you suck all the humidity, mm -hmm. there is no way for air to come in. Then mm -hmm. that different situation, just like oxygen. If you consume oxygen, mm -hmm. yes, your oxygen is lost. Mm -hmm. That's not what uh, humidity harvesters do. They they do very tiny bit of harvesting. So, sir, uh, this will also affect it uh, about the site, for example, uh, in Delhi or Rajasthan or uh, state where the rainfall is uh, too high. So, it will affect the output of the water? Of course, of course. Mm -hmm. Humidity is important. So, if mm -hmm. the humidity is low, mm -hmm. the output will be low. Okay. Uh, and power required will be higher. But then, you know, this passive harvesting that I just mm -hmm. told you about. Uh, so if that uh, that comes up, although humidity levels may be mm -hmm. low, over a longer period with a little mm -hmm. more material, you will get the same amount of water mm -hmm. uh, that uh, that you, you get in a humid area. Mm -hmm. So this technology also, is it, uh, in, uh, is it currently installed? Uh... Yes, it is certainly installed uh, in, in not at the scale of the Amrit and mm -hmm. But it is uh, installed in in a number of installations okay. across and also abroad. So th this happened. Okay. But it is expensive, as I told you. Okay. So, sir, if somebody wants to buy it, then where? Yeah, there is a startup company and uh, they can write to, oh. write to me. Yes. Okay, okay. Yes, because it's very interesting. Uh, the other day, I, I just learned about uh, artificial rain that uh, one of the institute yes. of IIT also made that possible. It's a usual phenomena in uh, Dubai, for example. Mm -hmm. They uh, very frequently make this type of a phenomena of artificial rain. Yes. And they're also, sir, uh, for example, for Dubai, because they have don't, ha don't have that uh, water like we have. We have so many rivers and all. They have only sea and they have harvested that sea water very uh, efficiently and there is no such what type of water shortage or uh, you know uh, bad type of a drinking water or these problems are not there yeah so, they largely depend on desalination and obviously mm. it is energy intensive they have energy mm. and so that that's that's a problem and of course there are environmental issues yes. also if you take a lot of desalination if you do then mm. there is uh, salinity increases in the ocean and that yes. uh, changes the aquatic life mm. Yeah, quite a that, that has other type of couple of issues. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so what do you think? Uh, you uh, have been to many institutions abroad also, and you have uh, seen uh, this scenario in India. What do you think the policies or uh, what all policies we can improve to make the uh, environment for you know research based, which is more product uh, delivery, uh, which is you know uh, research then transform into a product. And that can be for every science, for example. So what sure. changes in policies uh, you can suggest so that we can have more product-friendly environment and uh, we can provide the type of ecosystem for students to take up such projects? Well, uh, a big, big question. Um, mm -hmm. India is doing very many good things. Mm -hmm. Over the years, India mm -hmm. has done substantially you know it is continuing to do mm. great things, improving but yes. far more to be done mm. let me just list out a few things mm. uh, you know today we have csr corporate social responsibility based uh, you know the, that can go into research uh, csr the uh, the money available is about 35000 crores per year mm. i was is available and it can be tapped for mm. research institutions which can tap this for specific projects or specific objectives mm -hmm. i'm sure that resources are available now governmental resources are not adequate mm -hmm. i don't see that it is it is adequate today mm -hmm. uh, to fund 
quality research. Hmm. We are just about spending 0.67, under 0.7% hmm. of the GDP in research. Hmm. Ideally, it should go to something like 2.5 to 3%. Hmm. Over a period of time, this was expected to climb up, but it actually not climbed up. Mm -hmm. Now, it has, that is where the CSR and all those things have to come mm -hmm. in. But uh, reality is that resources are not adequate. Yes. This is one thing in the larger thing that I would say is that we need to pump in more money. Mm -hmm. The secondly, when you start pumping in more money, that money has to reach people. It's far mm -hmm. more important to give whatever money that is possible at the right time rather than giving 10 years later yes. or five years later. That's, that is a very relevant point, sir. Right. Yes. So we must create a, our machinery sufficiently well-oiled uh, mechanisms of distribution to be effective mm -hmm. such that money reaches that young man or woman at the right time mm -hmm. in their career to build science mm -hmm. and value. So these two things, uh, uh, what is more important to me is a scientific temper has to be created mm -hmm. in the country. Although the constitution talks about it, yes. scientific temper is very much missing. Yes. So the only thing that we can do today or India can transform mm -hmm. only with science, we must realize it. Mm -hmm. It is with, uh, with science, the world has transformed. Mm -hmm. American dollar, one dollar is, I was told that it is over 91 cents or 92 cents is nothing but technology mm. or even more. Mm. So we must realize this technology drives this economy. Mm. And for that, scientific temper is essential. So how do you build scientific temper? A whole lot of activities have to be mm. uh, taken care of in, in buildings. You know, I feel that it is not IITs or IISC that will change India. Mm -hmm. It will. It's our universities which yes. will change India. It's our colleges that will change India. And they need resources. Mm -hmm. See, I'm aware of, I work with certain universities. Uh, it is my laboratory's funding, whatever that I get, is probably is available to a department in a university. Mm -hmm. So how can you do research? So it must be, a nation also has to be you know, we, we must distribute resources. Yes. I would like to have more and more people from, from Manipur or Mizoram or mm -hmm. Meghala to come into research. Diversity. This diversity yes. is essential. And how do you enable this? Mm -hmm. See, ours is a country where women don't do research. Mm -hmm. I mean, so the issue women change. is something else. Yeah. <laughs> it will again take up changing. an hour of discussion. Yes. Yeah, yeah, things are changing. Mm -hmm. I fully understand that. But what I'm saying is inclusion mm -hmm. of very many kind would be required in our society, mm -hmm. in our research endeavor. That's when only that way you will address certain challenges. Yes. You will address specific problems that way. Mm -hmm. You will be sensitive to those problems that way. Mm -hmm. So I am a person... I would say that research requires all round mm -hmm. discussion. Every aspect or every facet of the society should be engaged in this. Mm -hmm. uh, and every region, you know, there are people, that, uh, I get a lot of Muslim mm -hmm. uh, women and uh, men in my laboratory. I personally encourage this because these are communities where we do not we haven't adequately, you mm -hmm. know, provided opportunities. Mm -hmm. Now, this is not to mention one specific uh, group, every group. Mm -hmm. uh, now, we, this will happen only when universities are empowered, institutions mm -hmm. across the country are empowered. Mm -hmm. All of these require uh, investment. I would say, touch upon the last bit. India is such a diverse country, languages. Mm. I enjoy my language. Yes. Same is the case with other languages. Mm. We have not strengthened scientific research with those mm. languages. Mm. I would say we must have, we must have technical um, publishing mm. in Hindi, mm. uh, in Uriya. Yes. You know, all of the Samis should be encouraged. Yes, outreach in a way uh, where local languages can be used to, yes, to you know, communicate science in a very simple language so yeah. that uh, the common man can understand it and uh, then, you know, got interested into what all is happening. So science has not uh, mm -hmm. got into our flesh and blood. 
the whole society india has a whole hmm. india's diversity is larger than the european the diversity yes. in europe you must understand this yes that is an asset to our country yes it is an that asset hmm. we have to strengthen that asset hmm. uh, so uh, to me uh, the tomorrow's best scientists are there in hmm. those neglected majority hmm. they need to be brought to the mainstream and that is the other mm. challenge uh, that that we have mm. now if uh, i i started uh, talking about this paddy fields and walking and all that there are very many people who have walked through very many paddy fields of drudgery mm. and those people when they walk through the corridors of science new science will come yes yes true sir so sir uh, i am a uh, uh, i'm a bioinformatician so i just get to know about hydro informatics what exactly is hydro informatics i never heard about that so hydro informatics is a methodology of utilizing all forms of water related hmm. information hmm. to predict uh, to analyze hmm. to empower communities hmm. so what so are the village applications So imagine a village hmm. where you know about the quality of water, quantity hmm. of water, the humidity in your soil, hmm. the humidity in your paddy field, the quality of water hmm. available there. Hmm. You are how much of in how this water is changing that society in terms hmm. of the agricultural produce, hmm. the prices, um, your health, all of that. you have multi layered information hmm. that you can build an analytical model and that would be hydro informatics the that key also involved ai it will of course involve ai so hmm. the key thing that we are doing right now is we are monitoring a village hmm. with sensors put in place okay with uh, real time data hmm. and analytics to build to tell us whether the crop is doing well the people mm. are doing well mm. uh, what intervention is required today mm. that is uh, over a, you know this is something that there is no limit to this growth mm. uh, but um, resources of course is a problem there you can't mm. put sensors for everything you have sensors for a few things uh, now mm. uh, you, you don't collect every possible information yes. that you can collect uh, but ultimately it is going to be driven by data mm. big data So, sir, what is uh, which village are you uh, doing that research? This work is uh, close to a village in Erode district in okay. uh, Tamil Nadu, in mm -hmm. a place called Nallampatti. That's a village where we have a Nallampatti dashboard mm -hmm. where we have. So once once that research uh, will complete, we can have that type of a, pro a product that we can. yeah you can see that actually nallampatti uh, village mm -hmm. uh, you can you can see the uh, data available today okay uh, i am just not seeing that right now but uh, my person can show you this okay mm -hmm. so this is already available uh, okay. some because of some licensing issue or something right now the page is down but I was just checking that. So, sir, what all data it will give? It will give the water qualities and uh, the amount of nutrients in in the soil also. Y anything. In fact, uh, you know, it all limits to mm -hmm. the you know limited to the kind of sensors you may have. Mm -hmm. So today we measure uh, the basic twelve uh, water quality parameters mm -hmm. like the pH, TDS, color, uh, what you know, uh, iron content, uh, nitrogen content, etc. Mm -hmm. It also measures the humidity in the soil and the air. it also measures the temperature ph mm -hmm. etc of the soil mm -hmm. amount of water that is uh, that is there the rain water that is uh, that is continuously being monitored mm -hmm. the climate is being uh, monitored the mm -hmm. uh, plants and the uh, their uh, chlorophyll levels are being monitored so like this if you start mm -hmm. thinking about it anything that you can see with a with, with an eye with a mm -hmm. which can be an instrumental eye you can mm -hmm. see very interesting and it is of my interest also Oh, you doing that? Of course. Yes. Of course. Yeah. It's a great, uh, great amount of work, and you know, very uh, innovative vision of yours. So, what you would you advise to the young students and aspiring researchers who want to pursue a career in science, and uh, how do you 
you know, advise them to take up science as a career? I would say two things. Mm -hmm. uh, to me, science is seamless, endless. Mm -hmm. uh, to me, science is literature, science is music, science is uh, everything. Mm -hmm. Science is everything. You just develop that openness. Mm -hmm. Uh, I to me, Mridangam or uh, Tabla is the same thing. Mm -hmm. It is a, some acoustics or something. Mm -hmm. But I have enjoyed science that way, a totality. Mm -hmm. Science as a totality. Yes. Uh, uh, no barriers. Mm -hmm. Second thing is that being inquisitive. Being inquisitive about everything around you. It may not be mm -hmm. something that you are in a position to study in every detail, mm -hmm. but be inquisitive. Uh, about anything. Mm -hmm. So sometimes that one day is inquisitive question. Mm -hmm. You may store it, keep it for a lifetime mm -hmm. where sometime it will come up. Mm -hmm. Sometime it will drive you, that question will drive you tomorrow. Mm -hmm. But being inquisitive. So that inquisitiveness to me, I, I read a, at least, you know, every day I read. Uh, it may be a new book, it may be mm -hmm. in politics, it may be humanities, it may be linguistics, it, it may be biography, it may be anything, it may be history. Mm -hmm. So continuous being inquisitive does not say that inquisitive about chemistry. Mm -hmm. So these are the two principal things I have kept myself and I, I try to practice. Seamless, seamless about the world, mm -hmm. yes, seamless about everything. And when you say seamless, you know, you have no barriers. Yes. Uh, to me, uh, there is disciplinary barriers uh, disappear, uh, cultural barriers disappear, uh, language barriers disappear. Um, you know, the, the kind of um, uh, nationalities, all of these disappear. Mm -hmm. Science is ever per pervasive. Yes. So that, that, that is that good thing about it, right? Today, uh, you know, I can talk to you in India. I can talk to you in, yes. in, in anyway in America or Australia or mm. New Zealand or anywhere, right? I have people, I know people in any country. See, mm. that's a great thing about science. Yes. So, sir, do you remember any incident or discovery would, uh, could, that could be acted as the turning point of your career? Any, any incident or uh, discovery that you know, shape the vision of your laboratory. In in, in India, in my laboratory, mm -hmm. uh, when new things are born, when mm -hmm. we observe new things on a screen or mm -hmm. a computer screen or a spectrometer mm -hmm. or in a static laboratory, mm -hmm. I am excited when a new thing is seen. The mm -hmm. trigger is that new thing. I would go any extent to find that new thing, mm. support that new thing, support that individual who finds something new. Mm. I'm after new. Uh, and so any you... specific you want to mention that yes, this this happened and that gave us uh, the you know. So in the context of water, yes, the context of water, mm. I first saw that these pesticides that I had in water, mm. they don't exist with certain nanomaterials mm. than today. This was a measurement mm. that changed my direction in mm. the area of water. But as I said, that's a finding. That's, that's an observation. Yes. That's the peak in a spectrometer. That's mm -hmm. in a GC or a gas chromatograph or anything. Mm. So it, it, is, it is a new thing mm. that is manifested as a measurement. Uh, that changed me in the context of water. It was it was that finding mm. that changed me. There are very many things in the lab. Mm. Out of them were triggered by one observation. Yes. So, so how do you see your journey, and what inspired you to still, you know, uh, continue with such a passion and uh, grit? So much more to be found. Mm. Uh, inquisitive uh, every day. Mm. What all can we expect in near future? <laughs> Don't know. I uh, I take uh, each day as uh, as a new journey. Mm -hmm. You have a larger vision. Yes. Uh, but every day is a is a new thing. Mm -hmm. Every student is a new new person. Mm -hmm. The person's ambition is different. So I would say I don't work for. Um, 
a set agenda mm. with set individual. I have an overall vision. Mm. And this will be accomplished. Yes. This will be. Uh, mm. But with many, many people uh, together, with mm. uh, you know, it's a complex dynamics of funding, complex dynamics mm. of people. Many things happen in this. Mm -hmm. But an overall vision is certainly there, and that overall vision is about clean water. Mm. But that water need not necessarily be just water alone. It may be waste. It may be waste water. Um, mm. It, it yes. may be so. It, it is a totality of mm. water. So, how much do you think that problem is solved of drinking water, and how much is left still left? Still, you have to, you know, uh, we have to uh, reach to make the efforts to, you know, reach. Every individual should have the clean water. That it is vision, still not achieved, yes. That vision has not been achieved. Mm -hmm. If you say that the country, that vision, if it were to be solved in a in a 10-year window, mm -hmm. for everyone, I mean, mm -hmm. we would have done a wonder. Mm -hmm. and, and I would say that that is very much feasible uh, today. Mm -hmm. Uh, all the initiatives of the government and mm -hmm. all the support of uh, people, it is very much feasible. Mm -hmm. But remember that if you say any problem, if you say that's, that's solved, mm -hmm. you are only you, you, you are insensitive to history. Mm -hmm. Because history will open up newer and newer challenges. Mm -hmm. When I say water is solved, tomorrow this very same water that you have solved today you will find newer challenges in that. Mm. You will find there is, you may have many, many things. All I'm saying is expectations of tomorrow are going to be very different. Yes. They are very different and let's hope that we will solve the uh, basic issues of humanity. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. That we should do. That we should do. Mm. So, sir, thank you so much for thank your you. time because you are a busy person and you have taken out your time for uh, this initiative. Thank you so much. Thank you. We are blessed to have you. Thank you very much.